This is a painting called Two Men Contemplating the Moon by Caspar David Huytrich. Upon first glance, this painting does not appear to have any strong political message. However, if you look more closely at the details, specifically the clothing worn by these two men, you may see that, that it resembles those worn by young members of a German nationalist group at the time of painting. This is part of a larger trend of people using art in order to further their political goals. It is crucial that we examine this in order to better understand how it works and thus implement it in the future. My name is Camille Neal. Considering relevant historical information, would continued usage of art in politics yield, polit yield positive results? The continued use of art would have a positive impact on politics, as, as is evidenced by events throughout history, specifically relating to the creation of national identity, international relationships, and the transfer of political ideas and theory. Art in the creation of national identity. Art interacts a lot with the creation of national identity, which makes people feel more uh, involved with their country, specifically relating to the Romantic period, which happened in Europe and began at the end of the 18th century. This period included a lot of poems and artwork featuring beautiful landscapes, and also included the revival of tradition and culture relating to one's country. This had great impacts on people's nationalism, especially in Germany, as it did ultimately lead to the unification of Germany. Music also has a great impact on people's sense of national feeling. For example, the Estonian Song and Dance Festival, which began in 1869, was a great factor in Estonia's eventual independence from the USSR. Also, Guantanamera, a song with lyrics from Jose Marti, a famous Cuban poet who fought for the Cuban freedom from Spain, has, is now a very strong and well-known song for Cuba and is often used as a rallying point for Cuban people because a lot of them identify with it. This is a painting by Abhinindranath Tagore entitled Mother India. This painting shows India represented as a woman. And this was used by people at rallies in order to show that they were India because at the time India was having a lot of trouble separating itself and its culture from Britain who had been ruling over for them for so long. And so paintings like this were very useful in helping to create that identity. However, that is not to say that creation of nationalism is always a good thing as nationalism can often lead to fascism, as happened in Italy and Nazi Germany. In Nazi Germany specifically, a lot of pictures and paintings were produced that showed Jews in a very negative light, and this was harmful because it led to their persecution. Art and diplomacy. Art has impacted diplomacy throughout events such as an Australian art exhibit, which took place shortly after Pearl Harbor. The original purpose of this exhibit was simply to display Australian culture. However, due to the timing, it ended up being a method for Australia to cement their relationship with the United States of America on the Pacific front of World War II. On a more individual level, we have events such as Queen Elizabeth I, who would often invite foreign ambassadors to listen to her play music, specifically the lute. This created a strong personal relationship between them, which then led to more streamlined negotiations later on. Also, uh, during the Cold War, a lot of American musicians were traveling to various foreign countries. And according to Fossil Lucier, this transformed the capacity of individuals to imagine themselves in relationship with each other, redefining the perception of their roles in the world. While this may seem to be a very small scale, it is important to consider that these individual people are what eventually leads to large amounts of change. Uh, the idea, so given the use of linguistic and non-linguistic devices, the political cartoon genre provides a medium for communicating messages through which social and political agenda are set. And this impacts art in the spread of political ideas. The idea that political cartoons are made more effective by their accessibility is, made more, is supported by this example, which shows a bunch of countries fighting over China, portrayed as a sleeping dragon. While there are words on this picture, it would still be fairly simple to understand without them. And so that helps contrast with the barrier of language as some people might not be able to read the words. Similarly, this painting by Norman Rockwell entitled The Holdout portrays multiple men pressuring a female juror, all of them are jurors, into conforming with their, with their line of reasoning. This is a statement on misogyny in professional settings at the time, and it does not include any words except for jury, which isn't necessary to understand the meaning. However, clarity is not necessarily the only virtue found in art as this subtlety is a factor as well, as you can see in this painting that I've displayed previously. 
this painting was not displayed in an art museum for people who agreed with the, with the topic necessarily. It was instead distributed for everybody. And because the message is so subtle, it allows it to go mostly unnoticed and thus giving people who may not agree with it an, an entrance into the topic. Once again, this painting is not immediately obvious what it's referring to. However, this means that it can be displayed in areas that it may not have been able to be displayed otherwise. But once again, art's use, in pop, art's use to convey information is not always a good thing. So an example such as this poster by Juan de Jong entitled, Read Chairman Mao's Books and Listen to His Words. This portrays Mao Zedong, the former ruler and founder of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. His warm presentation in this specific image harshly contrasts with the realities of his rule, which was very bad for the Chinese people and led to many deaths. One potential solution is the incorporation of art into international political events, such as summits. This, however, does face the issue that scheduling these events is already quite difficult, as many people have very busy schedules. Also, there may be some existing conflict between nations at these events, and so art alone would not be enough, which ties into the limited potential of art. Art alone will not be enough to do anything. We have to include action in other ways with it. Uh, arts use within the nation could include things like parades. And with these, you also get the issue of you don't want to overcorrect into things like nationalism, which then creates an us versus them mentality. And also, you don't want to go not far enough and then not have any effect from it. And finally, there's art as a communication aid, which is very, very effective. However, we must consider that what message we are attempting to send with these pieces of art. Here are my work cited. Thank you. What questions do you have? Two questions I have for you. How did your research question evolve as you moved through this process? So originally, my research question was focused solely on Europe. However, as I continued researching and found more evidence from various areas of the world, it changed and became more of a general question of uh, looking at the entire world and not just Europe. Okay. Um, and what advice would you have for a researcher who did a topic like this in the future? My advice would be to make sure that you look at who is writing the pieces of art that you're looking at and like what their purpose was. Because if you just look at what the actual effect was in the piece of art itself, you miss a lot of the story behind it. 